don't talk about self defense. <laughs> Someone got cauliflower. I'm not, or not that I'm going. I'm not to. making eye contact with that guy. <laughs> I don't think it's, it's <laughs> well, nothing gonna happen. Uh, Nick and I went down to Mexico for one of his fights. <clears throat> We're walking through every airport or place. You know, somebody would see his cauliflower ear, and they would come up and talk to him. And I go, "Did you know that guy?" He's like, "No, he just saw my ears." <laughs> like, <laughs> like a celebrity. <laughs> Jared Conan, welcome to the podcast. I'm going to let you guys just introduce yourselves from the start. Uh, your company, your names, what you guys do? Well, I'm Conan Schaefer. I'm a co-owner of Lincoln Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Center. Mm -hmm. And I'm Jared Downs. Same? Same. <laughs> awesome. Yep. How long have you guys owned this company? We started in April of 2013. So nine uh, years, huh? Wow. Um, yeah, so a little, well, 11 years. 12? My math off. Oh, is it nine years? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I think yeah. it is nine yeah. years. Yeah, because it, this coming <laughs> April will be our 10-year anniversary. Wow. Yep, yep. yep. Right. So that's a big milestone right yeah. there. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Wow. And you guys have both been in it for, for that long together? Yep. And we actually started doing, uh, or I started doing martial arts jujitsu with Conan, uh, I think in 2012. Oh, wow. So this so is like right away, huh? So you, hold up. So, okay. <clears throat> you, 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 you started doing jujitsu. Was there any... Be like oh wait no twenty uh two thousand nine I think is when I started okay so you were doing it for a couple as yeah it was, it was a couple like it was a couple years one year of fighting them you know no, I no, no. own something that people come to <laughs> and fight okay yeah. uh, can you know uh, can I, I you guys are guys I'm sure it's fine mm -hmm. what's the age difference between you guys or not difference but um because that what my I'm leading to is how did you guys meet and how did you guys I'm I'm thirty seven okay I'm fifty nine okay so same age roughly. Yeah, yeah, right <laughs> right. exactly. So, how did you guys come together, like become partners? You know, decide to start, you know, a business. Together? That's a pretty big uh, apple to bite off. Well, Conan was teaching uh, jujitsu. He was the head instructor at uh, Roseberry's Martial Arts when I started there. As he was a brown belt at the time, um, and I started just because I I did martial arts as a kid. Okay, and I was looking to get back in shape. I went to the gym. I liked it, but I didn't love it. It was kind of boring. Thought. Yeah. I got to do some sports. I can do that forever. Right. So, oh, what do I like to do? Oh, let's try this martial arts stuff. I actually started in Aikido. I did that for maybe six months, something like that. It was not quite physical enough mm -hmm. for me. Um, and I saw the jujitsu class. It looked like a bunch of savages. So <laughs> decided I needed to do that. Tried my first class. I was so sore. I couldn't come back for a whole week. Oh, wow. But watched good. a little UFC. <laughs> decided I needed to come back and uh, been there ever since. Which was sort of fortuitous because I didn't think Jared would last a week. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so it's like that. So no, well, it was Jared uh, has always been a little bit more reserved and quiet. Couldn't read him at all. Uh -huh. And uh, wasn't sure after that first class if you would ever come back. But yeah, he did. So, okay, I had, uh, okay, this is going to be. Just a quick side question. Okay, uh, I have a company, White Spider Electronics. So the one thing that I just keep seeing in your guys' logo is a spider. Mm -hmm. Why is the spider there? So um, back to when we actually started this business is um, in 20, must have been 2012, uh, Greg Lawson, who's our other partner, moved from California back to Lincoln, uh, came. We were really kind of the only jujitsu place in town. Uh, he was already a black belt in BJJ at that time, and there's not really any BJJ schools. So he came and trained with us, uh, started teaching a couple classes, and then at that at that time, we weren't um, really well-loved in the dojo we were at. We were growing really crazy at that point. We mm -hmm. had asked for a couple other class times in the evening. Our class time was really crappy. It was like, it was like three in the afternoon or something <laughs> so like that. So this is a class Super you guys were leading for everyone, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, something <laughs> like that. And you guys were leading this class in the dojo. Uh, Co Conan was. Okay. I was just a student. <clears throat> okay. Um, at this point, I was maybe a purple belt in Japanese jujitsu, mm -hmm. and w which we were doing BJJ kind of informally. Conan can talk about more because he was the one leading that class, but we weren't really well regarded in the dojo that we were at. And we were growing really fast. Greg had moved into town, and so kind of all got, um, I had a little bit of money, um, talked to Conan, Conan was excited, talked to Greg, like, hey, we should start our own thing, we're not really, you know, getting what we want here, we're not getting the good class times, 
obviously there's a need for it. Yeah. Uh, we see all the people joining. Everyone's complaining about what time it is. How come there's no, not a bunch of more classes? You know, so we kind of got together and talked Greg into starting our own place mm-hmm. where he would be the head instructor and we would be partners in the business. And so back to your question, Greg's teacher is a guy named Chagina, or his nickname is Chagina, pretty famous uh, BJJ black belt. And his, like, move is called the spider guard. And so it's, it's a move where you, or it's a position where you grab both sleeves, so a sleeve in each hand, and you put your feet in the inside of the elbows, and you can kind of control your partner. And so it kind of looks like a spider, so they call it spider oh, wow. guard. Ah. So we took the inspiration from that, uh, created a logo of the spider, and wow. it's kind of just been our, our mascot Man, ever that since. That is cool. That is very interesting, <laughs> like, thought out to put in, like, a, a little personal twist into that. That's really cool. Um, Conan, we talked a little bit about your background before we uh, started filming about you being uh, in law and stuff like that. Uh, I wanted to ask you, what was your background so before, I mean, starting a business? Sure. I um, At 16, I started at Walgreens as a cashier. Very mm-hmm. important for the Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Yes. World. It's yes. very important. Um, <laughs> <laughs> for turns the business. Out, turns out it's going to be because I worked my way all the way through college. Okay. Um, as soon as I graduated college, they gave me like a shift manager position. Mm-hmm. Worked my way up through there. Was pretty uh, pretty successful in moving my way up basically as quickly as I could. Right. Uh, when I was 30, I had my own store. Oh, oh wow. Um, so learned I a lot did about. Get yeah, learned <laughs> a lot. Of, see that coming. Learned a lot about management. Learned a lot about, um, you know, how to run a team, how to run a business, um, all within the corporate structure. So I was very much, you know, coloring within the lines as much as I as much as I had to. But, right. um, you know, kind of working that uh, kind of corporate corporate job, but still being a leader. Um, and then I got to the point where the business was successful enough. And in November, 2019, uh, right before the pandemic, so a great time to take a leap of faith, <laughs> uh, quit my job at Walgreens and went full-time at the Jiu-Jitsu school. Yeah. Wow. wow. Well, while we're on the topic, how did you guys, you know, when it came to COVID and stuff like that and Jiu-Jitsu being such a contact sport, how did you guys, you know, get through that? Well, we shut That's down. That's a huge jump ahead. I know. I'm just yeah. super curious. We voluntarily shut down right around April and then shortly because we weren't, they were just encouraging. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember at that time it was, was it? What well, was it, mask or mask? No mask at that point. Well, no mask. But <laughs> this is when they were saying don't It was at this point. It was oh, that like, early. So enough. they're going back and forth. So 14 yeah, days to flatten the curve. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. This was the so <clears throat> we did. We wanted to, we were trying to time this thing so we could be shut down for two weeks or something. Spot mm-hmm. on two weeks, yeah. Yeah, so anyway, we shut down, and then uh, the city and state mandated closures for, so we were, we were shut for about three months at that oh, wow. point, and then the governor opened it back up in July 1st, so we opened up, and then the city turned around and started, wanted to shut us back down, and but it, it got pretty, pretty crazy. I think we were closed for five, five and a half months that whole year. Oh, yeah, the, se- the second time we shut down was uh, mid-November. Mm-hmm. And we shut down until the end of the year because there was another spike. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think a couple of the instructors caught it. And so we were like, okay, well, it's there's a lot right now. Obviously, right. we're cover- trying to cover classes. with, yeah. And we can't have sick people out there. You know, Just do it over Zoom. <laughs> we actually, when we came when we p- came back in July, we actually did. We had uh, bought a bunch of grappling dummies, had everyone spread out. They were, everyone was doing solo stuff on dummies, you know, six feet apart. And then, mm-hmm. yeah, we had Zoom so the uh, parents could come watch the kids do mm-hmm. do their practice if they wanted to, or okay. they could participate at home if they wanted to. And that lasted maybe maybe a month or so, and then we then we br- started bringing back gotcha. partners. But that, okay. I, I had I have a question though. This is not a I understand it's like we're we're more of a kind of a business side of things, but I've for the life of me, like obviously everyone's seen, you know, Joe Rogan's podcast. He's like a big, you know, mm-hmm. you know, combat and everything in MMA. I can you give me an explanation of what the difference between uh Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is compared to like what is unique about that versus other combat fighting styles? And what just to add in, difference? do you guys think that is, you know, the best form of fighting, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and why? Because the thing yes. is, I mean, you guys are specialized, yes. yeah, yeah, so yeah. I would assume so. <laughs> so it, it depends. I mean, if you're going after a striking art, then 
jujitsu obviously isn't very good. Not really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Um, it can put you in really good positions. So like, oh, you, know, you talk to somebody who's untrained, like, well, I can just punch you. It's like, okay, well, I can mount you and I can punch you too. <laughs> right. You're going to be, and in then bad, we'll be, <laughs> you're going to be in a bad position. Right. Yeah. Um, I think there's, there's lots of really good martial arts and lots of very good fighting systems out there. Yeah. And, um, the the basic what I see as the the line of uh, difference between a good one and a bad one is whether you go live with your partners. So if you put it in real world situation with somebody resisting against you and it works, then it works. Mm, okay. And if you if it's all kind of like fake sparring and like going light and like right. doing drills, it might work. But you but haven't you'll never te- know you until haven't tested it's live, it. Yeah. And so the advantage that Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and and like say like wrestling have. Mm-hmm is that you can go live all the time, yeah. and there's not a huge risk of injury. Like, you're not getting kicked in the head. You're not right. getting punched all the time. It's something that you can go really hard at a lot okay, and still come back tomorrow and do it again really hard. So it's really effective in that, in that aspect. And that's, I will say often, <laughs> you can never practice the dim mock death touch because... What is a dim mock? You can only do it once. You can only do it once. It's the death touch. <laughs> oh, okay. So you're so you're you're okay. So you're <laughs> saying that it's in in terms of why you guys like other it. martial arts, like you uh, and and no, do I I Jared did other martial arts. I did too, karate, gotcha. day, taekwondo. But it's difficult to go. You can't go full speed. You can't. Well, you're always gonna you're always gonna simulate like a groin <coughs> strike. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not going to yeah, do yeah, that you're never going to kick someone right? in the head, like, you know. So you always have it like, oh, I've, I've practiced this, but mm. not really. I've kind of right. I've gone through the motions. So is that kind of like you mentioned you had a background in Aikido. So is that kind of how Aikido was for you? Because if I'm remembering correctly, Aikido is like a self-defense art, right? So it's like literally a martial arts. Based yeah, it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like lazy judo a little bit <laughs> the easy you know, way out huh no, um it's no a lot of like to the aikido people no <laughs> no but it's a lot of like wrist locks and and you want it seems like i mean what i got out of it and i did it for not even a year so i'm not an expert by any means but a lot of the stuff is very like from a distance you know i'm grabbing okay. your wrist as you go to grab me it's oh, not okay. once i'm already in a headlock what do we do from there right okay. it's so it's very like Far distance. Gotcha. Um, and then again, you're going fairly light with that stuff because if I, you know, move your wrist in a way that makes you do a front flip, yeah, you're how hard am I gonna do it and you're gonna come back tomorrow? Like it's mostly practice. So do you think do you think uh like uh jujitsu is more or from your guys' classes and from your experience, how many people do it uh, for, like, a form of, like, working out to stay healthy, to stay active? Or, like, and how many people is it, like, oh, this is, like, I- I'm assuming you don't get very many, like, people that are, like, oh, I'm going to, you know, this is what I'm going to do for, like, self-defense all the time because, I mean, we're in Lincoln. But I, I mean, there might be. I'm sure there I is. I feel like that would be more the majority of uh, people doing it for self-defense. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I think there's so much overlap. I think people do it for self-defense but then get the workout out of it. And then some people do lift weights and do other activity. Right. But is it more? Is it more like to to stay healthy kind of thing that, that you guys are saying? Or like I think a lot of people, the way you find it is different for a lot of people. You know, some people are looking f- to for a workout like I was. Yeah. You know, looking for something fun to do and stay right. healthy. Some people are looking at it for. I, I hear this a lot from parents. Actually, I get a lot of emails like, "Hey, my kid's getting picked on. Okay. We want to give him. We want to get him into this, so he'll." Have some self defense. Gotcha. Not really what I'd recommend for self defense. <laughs> so my not, kid can go and flip this not kid because, at school. Not because it's not because it's ineffective. I just think that there's a lot better ways to deal with bullies than yeah. you know, putting hands on them. Yeah. Right. But it, it gives them the confidence to know that they could, yeah. and I think that that confidence carries carries through even more than the technique does a lot of times. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. No, that's interesting. That's interesting. It's just because someone who's never I've I've always been more on the sports side of things. Never never quite dabbled in in the combat like hand-to-hand combat sure. side of things like i remember like th- even like him and i we've been friends forever we've like we were talking about like man do you know like be cool to go like boxing like learn how to box or learn how to fight and stuff yeah i obviously never did it because more so we're like i don't know how many times i want to get cracked in the head you know Yo, i was right? always scared <laughs> of like a cauliflower ear too you know yeah. like is it like you get that from being like blunt you can't. force to your ear or? yeah you can yeah. yeah i got a little bit um you can there's some people who 
I mean, it's genetic too, a little bit because right. oh, wow. there's some people who have been doing it for 20 years. They, and have they never nothing. have it. Yeah, mm-hmm. it just never, never happens. I have a little bit. You can, you can drain it. You can treat it at the beginning right. if you catch it early, and okay. it's not too big of a deal. Some people like the way it looks, and they think they look really, <laughs> really tough. And I'm assuming there's no. There's yeah, that is a knowing good my point. wife. No women would be like, you know what? I'm trying to get this going here. <laughs> yeah, I don't no. think so. But that's a good point. If I see somebody that has like a cauliflower, oh, I'm yeah. like, man, you know what? I don't really want to say about nothing. Self-defense. To Someone got cauliflower. I'm not. I mean, not that I'm going. I'm not making eye contact with that guy. <laughs> I don't think it's <laughs> well, going to happen. Uh, Nick and I went down to Mexico for one of his fights. <clears throat> We're walking through every airport or place, you know, somebody would see his cauliflower ear, and they would come up and talk to him. And I go, did you know that guy? He's like, no, he just saw my ears. <laughs> like, <laughs> like a celebrity. Well, it's, like a, wow. it's like a badge of honor almost. Yes. It's like one of those, like, yeah. I've, earned my, I've earned my badge. I've earned my, yeah. you know. Yeah, so we talked a little bit about your background, Conan. Can we uh, go into your background a little bit? What did you do before uh, getting into jujitsu? Before starting this company with uh, Jared? Well, I was a Lincoln police officer, and what prompted me to start looking for something was just an incident on the street. We had a, a large guy. I don't know if he was a linebacker or not, but three hundred fifty pounds, just built like a brick house. Greatest linebacker of all time at 350. <laughs> Goodness gracious. <laughs> I don't know. Huge guy. And it, there was an uh, unfortunate situation. Yeah. Um, he was downtown drinking with uh, a cousin, and uh, there was a death in the family, and they got notified. And they were just distraught. And they were. This was back in the day when we still had pay phones. They ripped one out of the wall, and one of the best bus shelters that are anchored into the uh, sidewalk, he, he was ripping it out of the sidewalk. So we showed up, and there was like seven or eight of us, and just pushing and pulling and tugging and working against each other. And yeah. he just got, finally got tired and let us put handcuffs on him. But then when we went to get him in the car, he had this resurgence of energy, and it just took. It was just a mess. So I was thinking to myself, there had to be a better way to control people out there, safer and. Um, found, did Aikido for a little bit, did some karate, did uh, Aki Jiu-Jitsu, and then found Jiu-Jitsu. And I never looked back after that. It was like, oh, this was exactly what I was looking for. How many years have you been doing it, training, fighting, or not fighting, training as well as teaching? Uh, I started around 2003. And um, so the, the person, the guy who started the program at Roseberry's, was from Israel, um, Ido Pariente, and he had left about six months prior to me starting. And it was a, a true BJJ program, but we had no lineage. We didn't have, we couldn't say that, you know, this guy taught this guy oh, and this guy taught yeah. this guy. So we could never claim, or because of the, I don't know, social norms of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, we could never say we did Brazilian Jiu Jitsu because mm-hmm. then people would say, well, who's your teacher? Gotcha. <laughs> So, um, so we trained and we got our belt system through uh, John Roseberry. He was the Shihan, but it was a traditional Japanese dojo. So they had karate and judo and the weapons and Aikido and all these other things. And Jared had alluded to, mm-hmm. we were sort of the uh, redheaded stepchildren of the dojo, um, and all of the class times were ideal and geared towards the traditional arts. Mm-hmm. So we had our little group over here doing the jujitsu with the bad time schedule, and but it was um, so f- when we decided to open up the school, we also decided to give up our belts rankings that we had through Roseberries and just start over at White Belt and then work our way back up. So if you guys went to a, so if you leave a dojo, you lose your belts. No, because um, we wanted to say like I starting at White Belt under Greg. Mm-hmm. Um, who was a BJJ black belt? I can now oh, say gotcha. I am oh, a he so like that lineage too. Okay. Yeah. So how does the ranking work? So how <laughs> does somebody go from a white belt to purple belt, to brown belt, then black belt? No, there's, there's more. There's blue no, belt. that's a blue, blue, belt. Belt, blue belt. Oh, blue and belt. And is there yeah. anything above a black belt? I heard that you can get a black belt like different degrees so of it or something yeah, like that. After after black belt, um, instead of it being um, a little bit of it is time-based, and a little bit of it is skill-based. Mm-hmm. Um, after black belt, it's just time-based. Mm-hmm. So if you keep training, 
you know, I, I, I forget what it is. It's three, three years. years. Yeah, three years. Then you get your first degree. In three more years, you get your second degree. Mm-hmm. Eventually, um, I think it's like sixth or seventh degree, you get um, a white and red belt. A coral belt. Yeah. Right. And then after that, you get a black and red belt. Oh, wow. And then ninth degree, they reserve for only somebody who's had a, like a significant impact on the entire system of BJJ. Oh, wow. And that's a solid red belt. Wow. So that's pretty rare, huh? Mm-hmm. Yes, very rare. I'm assuming there's probably, I mean, it can't be more than a handful ever of, of red Yeah, I think it's just a handful. Really yeah. 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 So shifting our focus <coughs> a little bit, we've talked a little bit about jujitsu and stuff like that, but you guys are coming from, a, I guess, a different side of jujitsu and stuff like that. So not the business side, you know? So what fal- challenges did you guys have to, like, face as you guys started this business, as you started jujitsu, okay, so now you're not just teaching the class, you know, now you have to run a company, make sure the financials make sense, stuff like that. How was that shift for you guys? Well, one thing for me, it was important that we didn't make our passion the bane of our existence. I wanted it to be fun for all of us. Mm-hmm. And I would say in our nine and a half years, mm-hmm. we were all still friends and all get along. That was that was important to mm-hmm. me. Um because we started with 15 students. Nine. Nine students. Nine. How many do you guys have now? Over 400. Oh, wow. <laughs> really? Oh my goodness. Yep. <coughs> so, uh, yeah, crossed our fingers, a wing and a prayer, <laughs> and we each put in our um, investment, bought some mats, or rented a retail space, mm-hmm. and just hoped that everything would go, out. huh? Yep, and when we started, we all, we all had other jobs. Okay, how long were you guys working other jobs before you guys went full time? Well, he said he just went off on 2019, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. And and so Greg, I think Greg went full time. I want to say because he was the head instructor for a really long time. So he from, would have to be there most. Right, but he was still working. He was a, a you know shift manager at Aiken's Health Food Store. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, I want to say it was maybe like a couple of years in that he finally could make the leap. Gotcha. To uh, <coughs> just doing jujitsu full time, and um, <coughs> Conan, when when did I talk you into coming on full time? Well, it was when Greg went to med school. Is that what you? Yeah. 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 So two thousand. Well, when when Jared came on two thousand nineteen, right, and then pandemic hits twenty twenty. And Greg, about that time, said, hey, just so you guys know, I'm applying for medical school. I was like, oh. That's a, that's big. Wow. Kind I, of shift. I had 23 years on with the police department. I kind of had wanted to do two more and get a full retirement, but mm-hmm. I made a decision at that point to go ahead and retire summer of 2020. And as Greg was um, leaving in August to go to med school, that I would just take over that wow. uh, where he was. Um, so there was a need for it, basically, mm-hmm. and you guys just. <coughs> so I, I uh, like, <coughs> er, in, in any small business, I, like, because 400, st- I mean, I I don't even know, like, the logistics and the operations side of that kind of business, because it, it's a service that has time slots, that has appointment, you know what I mean? But mm-hmm. it's not quite, you know what I mean, like, like a vet's appointment, you know, like a veterinary office. Mm-hmm. It's like a, you know. Uh, did, was there, like, from the start or as you guys got into it, were there, like, specific roles that you were like, okay, this person does this, this person kind of does this? Or did you guys say, like, okay, we need to hire on, like, this person or, like, a scheduler? Or was it, like, a technology that you guys brought in that made it easier to run the business? Was there something like that that you guys had to? It's all Jared. Yeah, so when, when <laughs> I – when I um, I was always kind of uh, behind the scenes trying to manage all that kind of stuff. Uh, Greg is a great instructor. Business really wasn't his his forte. Gotcha. Um, he had a lot of help, and he was kind of figuring out a lot of it as as he went. Mm-hmm. You know, um, when I came on, I immediately saw a lot of opportunities to streamline stuff. Um, found a new piece of software that helps us manage all of our payments, gotcha. uh, keep track of all of our all of our students. Um, Website, all right. that stuff kind of integrated all into one, all which in one is place super, super easier. helpful, yep. you know, um, figuring out, you know, we've got lots of, you know, help doing accounting and stuff, but how right. do we do our internal bookkeeping? Right. I kind of like t- 
took all that stuff and said, okay, well, how can we do all this better or more efficiently? Because I'm I'm lazy. I don't want to do. I don't want to spend twelve hours doing that's, you know payroll or yep. something. Yeah. So how do I make this a little bit easier? And so that that's really where my my training at Walgreens. I mean, I don't have a business degree or anything like that. It's it was all on the job training as far right. as uh, how to <clears throat> be a manager. Which but I I would say personally, uh, sorry to interrupt, but I'd personally say that is so much more like from someone who s- does it every day that sees it every day. I take someone who has like the experience of actually managing a team or people, something like that. It's so much more valuable, in my opinion, than than you could get from hundred percent. Maybe not yeah. any degree, but pretty much ninety nine percent of all of them. I don't. I don't like. I for the life of me can't figure out what you would learn doing a business degree that you would wouldn't learn within a year of of totally like agree. just apprenticing with the yep. business. Or you know, like, and that's I like. I don't mean to dog on colleges and teachers and stuff like that, but like when I dropped out of college, you know, I was taking a business class, and I was like, man. If you're teaching me about economics and how to run a business, why aren't you doing it? Mm-hmm. It seems ma- way more rewarding, you know, and that I just could never get over that fact. For, like, that was a huge kicker for me. Yeah. I, 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 okay. But anyway, to, to kind of bring yeah. it back to, yeah, yeah. To, to where you were saying, um, I had another question of, of you said 400. So I was, I didn't, for some, why in my head, I didn't <laughs> expect you guys to say 400, but what kind of manpower does that require for you guys to run? Like, do you guys have employees or is it just you guys? Yeah. So again, um, <laughs> I'm lazy. I don't want. <laughs> I don't has like, has 400 not, people. I love, just I'm so lazy. Ten years I'm in, like, I'm that's C suite. That's what I'm interested. <laughs> in. I, I love Greg, but he did everything by himself, oh, like yeah, as much crazy. as he could. Oh, he's he, old, he's old. He has to be older. Uh, he's a couple years older than me. Oh, so he's not that not not that much older. No, mm. but he wanted to do everything. That is everything. He wanted to have total control of everything. He, very ambitious and. I, I mean, from what I learned in the corporate world is the, the less that I can do, the yep. better. Yep. Yeah. The more I can train other people and make my job basically obsolete, yep. the better everything's going to run because then I can have a, a higher level view of everything. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have, uh, I think when I took over, we had six instructors, something like that. Okay. Uh, I think we've got 13 right now. That's a double in two years. Yeah. Um, a lot more classes. A lot more well, classes. When the kids' classes started exploding, oh, yeah. like we'll have 30 kids out on the mat. Oh, wow. And, and we started with just two instructors per kids' class, but you can't, like we'll have four. And then sometimes yeah. we'll have a parent who also trains in BJJ will come out and just volunteer out, out on the mat. Right. Because it's, it's crazy. Wow. Yeah. That, that's, that's, that, I, 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 I like, I think, um, <coughs> just because like I, I'm in kind of a, also a position where I'm, I'm always thinking of, how can we scale? How can we streamline? How can we make this better than the way we are? Or what are we doing wrong, right? So is there um, – I, I, well, you know what? Actually, before I go to future, uh, I want to kind of go into uh, – we did ask why you guys opened up the business or, like, you know, exactly what happened with all that. But is there um, a bigger goal behind this? Is there something – because I know you guys said, you know, you opened it, you know, the reasons why you went, but is there something bigger that's kind of driving your your why, quote unquote, without explaining too much? We just love it, you know, and we think a lot of other people will love it too. And there's a big there was a big need for it in town. Um, since we've opened, there's been a couple schools that have opened and then shut, right? Because um, they may, they might have the passion for it, but they don't maybe have the business skill, or they don't right. have the management skill, or they don't have the people relations, the teacher skill. You know, and so they're not able to sustain mm-hmm. where we have a lot of a lot of those things going on. Yeah, that was going to be my next qu- next question. You kind of answered it halfway there, but like, why would somebody like what separates you from any other dojo or jujitsu center? Why should they choose your your center over you know the competitions? We're the only one. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> we usually Pretty just much. challenge we them, exist. and if they lose, they have to close. <laughs> it's it's hard to be good at lots of things. Mm-hmm. And since we have so many people, it makes it a little bit easier. Yeah. Um, what, so is, what is that thing you said the other day? You could be anything you want. Oh, yeah. Uh, you can be anything you want. You just can't be everything you want. Yeah. Wow. I like that. That's good right there, Greg. You make sure you clip that one. <laughs> 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 wow, yeah. So um, we were asking earlier, kind of like uh, Ed was asking, what 
are you guys more like towards self-defense or for, uh, you know, health reasons? And the reason I ask that is like, you guys are more of a community based type of business, you know, so you're not like national, mm -hmm. so to speak. Right. So when it comes to like marketing strategy, I don't know if you guys market or if all, if it's all word of mouth, you know, but what is your kind of angle on the marketing side of it? Or did it just, you know, <laughs> so, um, the funny part is, is that you had mentioned Joe Rogan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, at this point, it's not even worth, I, I think it's not even worth advertising because the amount of free advertising we get from Joe Rogan and Jocko, like <laughs> and we, UFC could never, right there. Just we could never match that. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. since we're the only fun. game in town, it's really easy. So and some, and you, you ask somebody <clears throat> and you're like, how'd you find us? And so they either, there's a basically like four ways that they find us. They Google because mm -hmm. someone right. told them. They heard it on Rogan or another <laughs> podcast. Dude. And so they Google BJJ and yeah. we're the place that comes up. Nice. You know, or um, UFC. Actually, UFC. Or most of our most of our members, probably close to 50% of our members are referrals. Oh, wow. So wow. just wow. word of mouth that's, that's uh, awesome. is the biggest. You guys are doing something right to have that kind of r referral base. I was like, I thought you guys were like hosting <laughs> everybody come watch UFC and then there's signups <laughs> right after this UFC fight, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, well, so. I kind of have this, uh, <coughs> it makes sense to me uh, mm -hmm. that we nickel and dime ourselves to death. So one example of, of that is we'll do one off um, what we We'll call it a self-defense seminar. Uh -huh. So like at Union College, which is right about a block from us, yeah. um, about once a semester, one of the students will get a hold of us. We'll go over there and do a women's self-defense seminar and uh, at no charge. Mm -hmm. But we don't, you know, pretend like we're teaching them to protect themselves and yeah. you know, for the worst day of their life. It's <laughs> yeah. like it, it, uh, we, it's basically an introductory BJJ class. They have a great time. I say, if you like, if you love it and you want to continue, you know, here, we're, this is where we're at. Um, and we'll do several of those throughout the year. And we do get some members that will join from that or um, God, just the, um, greeting everybody when they come in. You know, the little tiny yeah, things. The hospitality. Yeah, yeah exactly. That makes people feel welcome that makes them make us makes it feel more like a family environment mm -hmm. um and just the other day we had you know a new mom came in or with her kid oh how'd you oh i work with so and so they they do jujitsu and they, they've been talking about it so um what is what is um so I, first of all super i, I don't want to say lucky but it's very incredibly nice. I say we're lucky. We're we're successful on accident. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't happen on accident for sure. So did it feel on accident while <laughs> you were building it? <laughs> but but the, de definitely not having a like a, a, a big competitor. Really, I mean, I guess I, I'm not sure if there's another dojo doing that or even at that size. Super awesome for for you guys, especially if you have that good reputation of, of you know being hospitable and um, you know just being a great place. What's um. So, okay, just a little background on, on, on me. Obviously, I'm Slavic, I'm Russian, and our, like, my parents, anytime it was anything, they barely let me play football because they thought it was too violent when I was a kid. Now, when you say just, you know, fighting, right, or, or combat, I, there is this stigma that comes with, oh, it's, you know, and maybe not now so much, but I know back in the day it was like, oh, there's, like, the stigma of, like, you know, getting your head beat in and i understand it's not that like striking right in, in in bjj what is like a stigma that is in maybe that we're not even aware of that's just not true because like because one thing you mentioned that kind of i didn't realize when you said hey when someone comes in and we greet them you know we say hey how's you know just like a person for some reason there is in my mind maybe it's movies or whatever but i i, I imagine like a very Hey, like a how are discipline? Come in. Very yeah. like a very like <laughs> welcome. No, no, no talking. Quiet. Oh, no. Some Cobra just, Kai energy. Yeah, huh? something just <laughs> craziness. Is there something? Is there a stigma that that isn't just is super not true? Did you guys have to go through any of that? Uh, just oh. there's a little bit of education that happens with uh, with parents. Mm -hmm. Usually, usually before they come in the door, right? Um, they don't quite know what we're about, right? And they'll ask a lot of questions, kind of like that, and you can just kind of point them to the right resources and tell them what it is. Gotcha. It, it's uh, it's getting to the popularity now where most people, it seems like, uh, have some awareness of it, and you get jump on the web for ten minutes. You can figure out right. that it's not 
you know, you're not going to get head kicked on your <laughs> yeah. first day. That's the, that's well, <laughs> and we have the s- specialized classes, I guess. So for some people, they'll be like, oh, I would never do that. I was talking with the, the mom of the new kid that came in yesterday. She works with uh, Nick. And I s- I'm like, and you could do jujitsu too. And she's like, oh, no, I can never <laughs> do that. I said, well, we have a women's only class. And she went, oh, really? <laughs> uh-huh. Or the older gentleman that comes in and says, oh, you know, I'm past my prime. Um, I say, well, we do have executive classes for people. Executive right? classes. I like that. I really <laughs> like that. Executive <laughs> training. I'm going to my executive class <laughs> this night. <laughs> well, you have to find a name that's not. Right. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> yeah. No, so, that, yeah, so those one-off, you know, classes draw in those people that wouldn't normally do. And then we have the MMA classes where... Oh, well, you guys do MMA, too. You just shove all the savages into that class, and, hey. like, you don't have to There's some real, yeah. like, okay. hitters in there, huh? That'd be the, the scary... That's where you're getting head kicked on your first <laughs> <one>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Uh, go for it. Go for it. Well, just the, the MMA classes, so the majority of them... Um, are non-contact, so it's pad work and striking. We have uh-huh, a okay. number of people have no intention of ever getting in the ring to fight. Uh-huh. Right. They love learning how yes, to fight. Yes. So, but then we do have the one class for our pro and amateur fighters oh, yeah. that you know where they do sparring. They go all out, yeah, yeah. or not all out, but just yeah. spar. Well, I mean, it's okay. a pro, so I mean, they are <laughs> going all out. It's it depends. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well so, yeah. So I had I, this is something that you guys mentioned and. Uh, I feel like maybe I'm only being opened up to this right now is that you mentioned something that uh, we went down there for this competition. So this tournament or tournament for this, uh, for this fight, how much of that in terms of, let's say you're a fighter, let's say you're someone who does, you know, in terms of competition, is that, is that a thing that you guys see in gyms? Uh, I'm I'm sure you guys know someone in other States that have, or cities that have, that also have their, um, you know, their gyms or whatever. How much are competitions something that you guys do? Um, or like, how does that all work? You know, I would say I would say maybe like twenty five percent of our um, people, our members, are actively doing competitions. It's kind of a lot. That's and are you guys like promoting them, or are you guys like how does that helping work? them? Like yeah. you know, kind of plug themselves into a community where they're getting some stage time, where they're fighting on a more like. Well, so most of the competitions are kind of like big, like everyone gets together. There's a bunch of a bunch of different BJJ. Divisions. Yeah. 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 It's not like one-on-one mm-hmm. fights mm-hmm. or one-on-one matches. Oh yeah, it's not you, like a big event. You jump or into you're you're in a bracket with a right. bunch of people. Your your age, your rank, your weight. Right. And then you're going, and then those tournaments will go all day basically. Right. Um. So yeah, we we promote other other tournaments. Mm-hmm. Um. And then recently we started running our own, um. And we do that a couple times a year, and so we're putting on our own tournaments now. Cool. Uh, and encouraging more people to compete. Um, not necessarily thinking that everyone that competes is going to be doing it all the time, right. but it definitely helps you foc- learn what to focus on. So if you show up to a tournament and you get totally beat up, you go, oh, okay, this is what <laughs> I need to work on now. <laughs> and it's very clear. All of a sudden, it's really, really clear what I yeah. need to work on. Or you do really well and you're like, well, that was cool. I'm going to do that again. And so maybe you're going to Omaha to do tournaments. We do uh, we take people all the way to Des Moines to do tournaments and people that go to Kansas City, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a local tournament scene and then right. there's uh, international tournaments as well. Um, Conan just competed at the Masters Worlds tournament uh, a couple months ago. How did that go for you? Third place. That's good. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> wow, that's that's and actually good, good. In the in the old guy division, <laughs> in the executive, this guy no, <laughs> in, in in the black belt old guy division. Yeah. Wow, yeah. so, dang, uh, you mentioned you, when I when I was asking about the promotion, you said this is Brazilian jiu jitsu. What about like on the MMA side? Are you guys like, do you guys promote fighters on that end too as well? That where they're like fighting in events and stuff like that. Like, oh, so we kind of have a unique um, <coughs> situation. I w- so we were at the, the last MMA fight that we had that was held out at Speedway Village. Dynasty um, was the, the promoter promotion. And I, and I realized that like two or three of the judges train with us. The DJ trains with us. <laughs> the, the guy that sets up the fights trains with us. You know, we, like, we all know these people. And even mm-hmm. the other referees that don't. And 
don't train with us. We all know each other. We just we're so plugged into the the scene. But yes, well, um, so it's easy for if our guys want to fight, if they want to do their first amateur fight, we have somebody that'll get that fight set up for them and promote it and um, get them in there. I, I had a question on on, on this side because, uh, in terms of, okay, here's another random question. If let's say someone is out there and they want to make a career out of this, I have never in my life ever heard of someone making you know BJJ a, a career. Like I'm talking about like a fighter. I'm gonna go to tournaments. I'm gonna ace everything. Is that possible? Is there mm-hmm. is there money? Like what kind of money can someone expect to like? It's it's just an amateur. Fights it's or? just becoming possible. Oh really? Yeah. Uh, it's not really for most people. No, uh, not as a not as a competitor. Okay. Um. There's an elite level of guys right. that can maybe make enough money doing tournaments and winning prizes that can that can do it. Right. Most people are living a very Spartan lifestyle at that point. Right. Um, there's another level of elite people who have kind of made their name either by winning tournaments. You know, you win these, like, international tournaments. Right. There may not even be prize money at the end. Really? It's a very much an amateur sport. It's very and much passion in, driven. In a lot of areas, it's still very amateur. Okay. Um, but if you're good, you can start maybe releasing some instructional DVDs. Okay. You can start doing seminars. So there are ways, and you can gotcha. open up your own school. If you have a notable name, you might be able to draw people in. So there's ways to make money off of it. Um, but it's 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 a grind right now. It's not really – it doesn't have a huge professional scene yet, but it is growing. Gotcha. It's not very e- – like it's not so I, – I guess the, the way to profitability, let's just say, is not so – a to B, it's there's A to Z, a, basically. <coughs> well, no, yeah, well, yeah. There's like probably you, like it's like like you mentioned. You're like there are so many different ways that you would can do things. You can release content and stuff like that. But that's not a very, I mean, if anyone who's done it, that's not a very simple. Like that's not right. so straightforward. You're, right? you're not making, a, yeah, a, a career out of it like you would as an MMA fighter. You don't get all gotcha. the sponsorships. You don't get all of the pay per view deals and right, all, right. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I, I, I just, I don't know why. I just feel like I've never met a, like someone who's a solely a, that kind of fighter. Or well, there's not a huge amount of. Uh, it's not really a spectator sport yet. Right. So it's I very much a participant sport, which is a really. It's hard to make money as an athlete in a sport where you have to basically participate in order to yeah, understand yeah, yeah. what's yeah. going on. So. That's true, because because I mean, like the only people I feel like I know that do it is like. Like Rogan, some MMA fighters, and like Vladimir Putin. That's pretty much like <laughs> that's pretty much the only people that I know. So we don't talk about him at this table, <laughs> right? I'm Ed? just saying. <laughs> I just like I don't like in terms of. I mean, he would be. You know, he could probably market himself pretty well. <laughs> I'm sure there's plenty of people want to fight him at this point. But yeah. um, so going back to like the business side. Um, so three, four years now, you've been full time in you know. The business, mm-hmm. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. What are some of the challenges that you guys had to face as a business, not like instructor side, but like were there points where you guys were like, okay, like this is a make it or break it type of point? You know, was there ever start with December of twenty nineteen? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So COVID. <laughs> God, COVID, I can't even imagine. That was that was really bad. Um, well, th- so this is interesting. You know, at that time we were almost one hundred percent. Our, our only revenue stream was for membership dues. Oh, man. And then when COVID That's hit. That's five we, months, right? And we closed down. Goodness. Yeah, so oh. people started um, canceling their membership. And there were enough people that got it right off the bat that, hey, if we if I cancel my membership and you guys go away, there'll be no place for me to come back to. So uh, they, they hung on. Wow. We had some people that um, canceled and then – immediately got a hold of us and were like, I don't know what I was thinking. Start my membership back <laughs> oh, really? up again. So all of that was just like, you know, hit you right there. Yeah, like dang. late nights kind of stressing, huh? Yeah. So we just, we were bleeding money, but it was. Yeah, we lost, uh, we lost half of our members oh, during that wow. first shutdown. And, and nothing against those members. That, right. Like nobody, it, we I never expected anyone yeah. to stay. Nope. I mean, it hit yeah. everybody. We yeah. get it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we didn't know when we were going to open up, when the city or state was going to say okay, and um, we had been communicating, or I had been communicating with the health department and all of that stuff, and I think there came a time when I went to Jared and said, what do you think our trigger is going to be for opening back up? Is it going to be financial, or is it going to be 
you know, we're just going to make a decision one day and say, you know, we're going to be a, like some of the other places in town that just stayed open or, you know, yeah. we're going against the, the mandates. Right. Yeah. But we just decided it was just, we couldn't survive unless we opened up. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Man, and in, in terms of it, I, cause COVID, I, just such a crazy thing. Cause mm-hmm. even like now, like, yeah, COVID has been, or is it still, I mean, anyway, that's <laughs> just whatever that is that, but like, you can still feel it. Like think about it, like throughout, I mean, even like I'm talking about global markets. Yes. But you can feel it like in your everyday, like mm-hmm. in our business, in terms of like logistics, you still feel like we, I, well, I still feel like it, the, it taught us a lesson that, um, I don't want to get too much into who are the, the our uh, silent advisors are, but uh, <laughs> you know it's like it wasn't even on our radar. But now we know every three to five years we need to plan for a pandemic. Wow! Every uh, three to five years we need to plan for a recession because we had just moved from our first location at 40th and O Street, had uh, done a pretty big build out for our new location over in College View, had a. Um, SBA loan mm-hmm. and and the sky was you know bright and, yeah. and all of a sudden Grass COVID hit green. yeah exactly we're like oh, oh man we need to have more money in the bank yeah. so that's that feel, especially like right now so it, what would be your guys's uh, uh you you mentioned something on advice was there something that you guys uh shifted or changed doing uh, obviously with COVID yes but I'm talking about I mean how you guys said you started this in 2013 from 2013, I don't want to say pre-COVID, but, like, let's just say to 2013, because I'm assuming, I just feel like we're, like, cap, you know, yeah. captive by what has happened recently, but has there been any, was there anything there between that time that you guys, like, okay, we have to change this, or or was it pretty... Did you guys no. ever switch to, like, online coaching or well, anything Well, and so, like, 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 Conan said, our, our only real revenue stream was memberships mm-hmm. at that point, mm-hmm. and so... When COVID hit, I was full time, but I didn't have anything to do, okay. so my job became go find money from the government. Okay, and so I made made full use of every penny that I right. could go find. Of course, um, which was a lot harder than, I mean, I thought it was okay. I was like, okay, the way these, it was being talked about was these just like yeah, these programs are fairly straightforward. You apply and you know yeah, get but some get some help from the bank if you need it. And don't lose your spot, but. A cool thing was not only did he do it for us, so he contacted other BJJ schools in Omaha and even the small one that's not, but anyway. Yeah. And and talked with them about, hey, how are you guys doing? Yeah, I was, I, was I mean, it, the community is such that right now there are more people who would could potentially do BJJ in Lincoln than yeah. we could support. Mm-hmm. So if there's other people... Omaha, Lincoln, whatever, yeah. that are doing BJJ or, like, starting a school or whatever, I'm trying to help build the community as a whole. Wow. So I was checking in with the other school owners and seeing, and it was surprising to me how much they weren't taking advantage of these programs that were out there to keep these small businesses yeah. afloat. We definitely took advantage of every single thing that we could. Yeah. We started um, really getting into merchandise, so we probably quadrupled our offerings during 2020. And we've continued to grow those right. um, ever since. Uh, we got really serious about a YouTube channel, put in our entire beginner curriculum up on Sweet. so people could follow along. Right. You know, if they were doing it alone and had some solo drills, so they could sure. watch it and do it at home and right. give them things to think about like that. So we just tried to, like, expand our, our offerings right. a little bit. It's really hard because we're very much, like, personal right right like you got to be in person Mm -hmm. you know what makes it special is the fact that it's the in person you could actually go full speed with that other person so Mm -hmm. making it you know trying to diversify that is yeah it we we did what what i thought we could but (laughs) yeah it's not the real thing and everyone kind of knew that and they're like okay well that's great love it but really want to just get back to it so our members were just calling for us to come back Gotcha. Even when we feel like, well, it's maybe not time just yet. You know, we'll set a date. Everyone gets super excited about it. Right. And then you guys and then you guys had that relaunch or whatever it was? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I, I love always asking the question, like, pre-COVID, post-COVID. It's because, like, you see, like, the mindsets of people, like, 
pre-COVID, you know, you get hit with COVID, you have to shut down, stuff is going down. And are you going to let that, you know, stop your business, you know, because there's a side, you know, where you're doing your passion, but there's also, you know, the side of like the finances, the growing the business, you know, the legacy building, you know, (laughs) you know, you got to eat. Yeah. So it's like, it's really cool to see that shift. Like, Hey, you know, we got kicked, but we got up and like, here we went here, we went here. And like, because of COVID through COVID, it forced us to adapt to become a better business, a stronger business. And we came out of that, like, you know, like better than we were you know, pre-COVID, you know, so that that's super cool mm-hmm. to hear. I love hearing those, like, it's like, I like to ask, okay, COVID sucked, obviously, but how did it make you better, mm-hmm. you know? So, like, yeah. that's super, super dope to hear. Is, th- is there something that you guys would say that, you know, that COVID kind of forced you guys to do that now you guys are actually better for it? Like, were you, were you guys, because you said you guys lost half your members, right? Mm-hmm. Are you guys bigger than you were now? Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay, so in a, yep. in a way, we maybe had 250 members at that point. What was the growth? How did you guys grow? Well, well, I, I understand that. Like, basically, basically, it, it fell off a cliff. Okay. Right, it went to fifty percent, um, and so we were you, down to about a hundred, weren't we? Right? Yeah, some one hundred twenty-five. Um, and so, basically, if you take if you put a pin in February twenty twenty, okay, and then you put another pin in February twenty twenty one, you can almost draw a straight line between them, where oh. we wow we dipped way down, but then we started growing back up really really fast when we came back and then if you stick a pin at that line and draw a line that's basically what our growth was so it's like we lost a year and it just like reset us but back back to where we where we want to be and you mentioned something about helping other um other businesses and actually i mean let's just go just from a business side of things your competitors technically Mm -hmm. yeah why 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 do you do that because we think we're better (laughs) <laughs> well, this I, mean, I mean, I want I want to grow. Tr- truthfully, I want to I want to grow the community. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. yeah. I want to grow the community of, of people who would like to do BJJ. Of course, yeah. And they can try all the other places, right. and that's totally fine. And I want them to try that uh, all the other schools right. and try us. And I want to win on the merits. Mm-hmm. So we just want to be the best. Gotcha. So the, the the best technique, the friendliest people, okay. most professional situation because that's a big problem in the bjj community it's all kind of like you know it's one step up ab- one step above dudes training in a gym in in their garage right okay. it's like one small step above that a lot yeah. a lot of the time yeah, yeah yeah so we're we're very professional in that we have like a, a real retail space it's not an industrial building which a lot of places are um <laughs> we have a, a schedule our instructors always show up which is a problem that's pr- that's probably <laughs> probably important. Yeah. Our our people are always on time. We start classes when we say we're going to. Our schedule is correct. Our website's correct. So it's a lot of like just being like professional mm-hmm. all the time. That like go try the other places. That's totally fine. We'll be here. And is there? I, I love that. That's just so cool. You know, yeah. you can kind of see the competitive side of it. You know, <laughs> you're like, yeah, you know, I am the best, but <laughs> you gotta come learn for yourself. You know, you know, actions speak louder than words. Right. Or that. Well, years ago when, so (laughs) there's a school in Omaha that had been around since around 2003 or so when, when I started Mm -hmm. doing it here in Lincoln at Roseberry's. And then at some point they opened up a satellite location here in Lincoln and my students, some of them came to me and said, are you worried? (laughs) And I thought for a second, like, what would I be worried? Well, what if some people leave and go to that school? I'm like, well, that might happen i'm going to charge them more when they come (laughs) (laughs) so but but the bigger thing is we might lose some off the bat but what it's doing i looked at the bigger picture of growing bjj in the midwest Mm. that was my big thing back then i was running tournaments running a youtube channel with instructionals and had a bjj blog and my whole thing was get that online presence to get people in and just grow the community and if we get another school in lincoln that's just part of the growth and you can't Get all wrapped up in, oh my gosh, what's gonna happen? Yeah, Yeah. I love how you're like. That's exactly where I was gonna shift next. Like this is that that that's perfect. I was gonna ask. Okay, so you you have your vision for your students, what you guys want to do, you know, with the people coming, and you know, you want to make them better. So from a business point of view, do you guys have a vision of like, okay, hey, we're community based right now. We're in Lincoln. Is there a a vision where like you guys are gonna be okay? Now we want to start expanding, like franchising, anything. Is there any sort of vision on the business side of that, like that? So we do have one affiliate school in Kearney. Um, so it's, it's its own school. Yes. It's owned by, mm-hmm. we don't own it or have anything to do yeah. with it. Sure. 
Uh, we just help out with their, because they don't have a black belt there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we help out with their curriculum. We go down there and we do seminars. We help them with um, business business advice, gotcha. just helping them yep. along. You know, we got them on the same software that we have. Uh, yep. We just, I talk to uh, the owner all the time and just try to make sure he's doing good and right. um, his students and, and him are supported. Okay. And so there's there's possibly more of that in the future. Um, there's plans right now. I mean, at some point, there's not really plans. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't say there's plans. There's ideas right now about like how we're going to expand because mm -hmm. at some point we're we, going to have, we have to be careful because every time we talk about expanding, know, our COVID. students get very excited. Like, are we, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> are we going to a different location? <laughs> are we, so yeah. I'll just, I'll, I'll just say at some point we're going to have too many students and our mats are going to be too full. Mm-hmm. Whether that whether the solution to that ends up being moving the entire school to a different location that's bigger that we can support more students, or opening up another location so that we can support students and cover more geographic area, mm -hmm. I don't know. It, it it we're not to that point yet, mm -hmm. but those are like kind of our two options as far as expansion within the city. Yeah. So at at some point, I mean, we're going to keep growing, so we have to have a plan. Mm -hmm. We just we don't know what that's exactly going to look like, what, you know, what all the different market forces are going to look like at that point when we're ready to do that. But yeah. those are kind of the, the options that we have right now. It's just, it's a unique situation here versus Omaha. So Omaha has five, six BJJ schools, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. but they're all smaller. Okay. <clears throat> we have one, so we get everybody, but I think Lincoln could support more. Okay. It, but that's just so what is what is uh what is because uh, i've never been to to your guys's um uh, is it a jodo dojo or gym <laughs> jodo. school it's gym. a jodo school yeah. Gym. Yeah. <laughs> well, how, how big is that square footage wise roughly i mean I don't, I don't know like what does it take to support classes in a you know what i mean let's say someone else starts this what 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 are they looking at you said a class of 30 yeah or you know obviously you said they i'd have to look are we like Roughly 35 or 38 uh total for the building yeah i think it's about 1200 square feet so that you the can mat space so you can actually support an actual like class with with 1200 because for some reason i was <laughs> i don't know why but i was thinking like a couple thousand square feet i was like because you need room because it's like it's pretty hectic in there yeah mm -hmm. um but I, you can go from the same obviously we can same. fit we can fit 40 on the mat uncomfortably <laughs> Uncomfortable. <laughs> like it gets a little tight. Uh, 30, 30 is about, for adults, okay. is about how many we can support reasonably. Gotcha. Probably more kids. Um, but most of our classes are under that. Okay. So, so it's, we it, only run into space issues every once in a while. Well, that's, yeah. So we used to have just, you know, I don't remember what our first schedule was, but like Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening. And then the classes started getting big. So, well, let's cross our fingers, let's create more class times, and maybe that will spread it out. And it did. Like, thank goodness. <clears throat> then we just, when it got packed again, then we added more class time. So now we run classes every morning, 6.30, every noon, and then in the evening. Like and five days a week or seven days a week? Um, seven days a week. Seven days well, a week. Well, five days a week five in the days morning. Five days a week with that schedule. With that and noon. And then we'd have um, Saturdays. Schedule is a little bit different on Sundays. But, but yeah. you guys still, I mean, I'm saying like you operate seven days a week. Yeah. yeah. Yep. <coughs> so Saturday is like 9 to 3.30. Okay. Is there is there is there someone who's not taking any days off? Is that one of you guys? That's, <laughs> just, that's just grinding there, sitting there. No. No, this is passive income. Ed. Yeah, they don't really, you know. Well, I mean. I, but I'm, I mean, like you, you have, you may have like an operator that I'm, doesn't. I'm there five days a week. Conan probably there about five days a week. Mm -hmm. uh, most of our instructors are. Uh, the, the kind of like top tier of the instructors that teach a lot of classes are there five or six days a week. I think we have one that's actually there seven days a week now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I think uh, yeah, Josh and Sarah. Oh yeah, Sarah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm me and Conan are there a lot of like for time between classes, mm -hmm. so we can do the business stuff stuff that, yeah yeah um a lot of our other instructors show up just to teach their classes and they don't do a ton of other other stuff mm -hmm. um some of them have other responsibilities that they do as well but primarily 
most of the other instructors are just there to teach a class. Mm -hmm. So we really try to spread the the load of instructing out over a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So it's not like we're not there 12 hours a day, seven days a week mm -hmm. or anything like that. That would really like put a burden on how much we <laughs> like jujitsu, I think. Uh, and then uh, I don't know if you have a, a, a direction you want to take this, but uh, my kind of question would be, and I, and because we've already been going for a while here, but what is your guys' um, – uh, in terms of in terms of kind of growing, because I love I love talking small business here, uh, or not small business, mm -hmm. and then you decide how big and small you want to get it. But um, in terms of growing your next operator, do you guys ever like look at that like oh I need to find the next person to because like like you mentioned you were like you come kind of from that background where trying to replace all the things that you're doing is there a, like a view of like oh you know what I need someone else to like operate this or run the show because uh, I'm assuming you're either the GM or something <coughs> along that line. Mm -hmm. Is there something that you guys as the owners are looking, do you guys look for that talent on the business side of things? Or is it like, hey, if someone's super passionate about it, we can teach them the business side of things? Mostly teach. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's kind of weird because it's almost like there's a, a credential system mm -hmm. in order to be a part of uh, the business in a real serious way, and that's your skill level in BJJ. Huh. So. The only people that we don't take people that are like just started right and say like okay well now you're in charge of this we're going to hire you and you're going to be in charge of this we take people like hey you're good at teaching jiu-jitsu we need another instructor would you take this class time we can bring you on and then oh if you're going to do this maybe we can have you also do this. something else too and we'll compensate you for that. Gotcha. And and that's kind of how how we run it. So it's not like I'm looking for necessarily a lot of business talent. Gotcha. In that sort of thing, it's mostly I'm looking for instructors that are really good at teaching jujitsu, and then giving them other things that they can do as well. Mm -hmm. Um, just a side question. I'm curious. How does your guys' uh, memberships work? Like, do you guys have different types of membership, or what is the breakdown on your guys' memberships? Yep, we've got um, an unlimited membership for adults. Mm -hmm. and it's billed monthly, and a three yep. times a week membership as well. And what do those cost? Uh, 150 for unlimited, mm -hmm. 125 for three times a week. Okay. And then it's just one uh, billed monthly, no contracts or anything like that, and just show up, and, and we do a free week trial. Okay. So anyone can try it, and if you like it, we'll get you, get you signed up. And then we have a different pricing structure for the kids. Yep. For youth, uh, once a week is 75 bucks a month. Or unlimited is 110. Okay. And so we've got classes for youth six days a week mm -hmm. and That's classes awesome. for adults seven days a week. So yeah. lots of options, lots of uh, – we can work around just about any schedule that mm -hmm. you have. And then we have a punch card system as well for people that only want to come like once a week. When they can. Yeah. Gotcha. That okay. would be for you. <laughs> when they can. Uh, okay. If that was a shot, or not. <laughs> uh, you got a problem with that? Show up and, I won't. and do something. I actually will not do do nothing. Um, okay, uh, I, since we've kind of been going for a while here, I we kind of asked this at the end, uh, more so in terms of advice, in terms of what your guys' future. Because I know you guys already talked about not plans, but ideas that you guys had moving forward. But um, in terms of advice, business or jujitsu wise, is there something you would leave off uh, for people, yeah. not not even leave off, but like you know what I mean, just something you would you would yeah. give, or even if if someone's starting a, a jujitsu center or something like that, you know, what should they be prepared to, besides you know, getting killed by the competition? <laughs> clearly, <laughs> clearly, <laughs> <laughs> um, al always be action beats in action all the time. Mm -hmm. So always, if you're thinking about doing a thing, don't put it off. Do the thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm the amount of anxiety that you generate by thinking about like, I'm going to do the thing later yeah. mm -hmm. is not worth it. Just do the thing, get it done. And you, your future self will thank you for it. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's why Jared and I kind of you know, being a, a Walgreens GM or <laughs> even just, you know, manager, you're the guy, you have to make the decisions yeah. you know, on the street and being a police officer, same thing. And if you are trying to work out every possible scenario and, and just and to the point where you can't make the decision, right. It, not good. <laughs> yeah. That's so solid. I, I feel like that pr procrastination kills real quick. Mm -hmm. is, there, is, there, is there something, cause, or, or would you just 
tag on to his to, to what he said is there like a it could even be life advice. I mean, <laughs> you've been jumping out of planes, <laughs> fighting 350 pounds. What is the story with that? What, you were in the military. Well, what it, branch? Uh, all my time was National Guard. I joined the Air Guard back in the late 80s and was in there for a couple of years. And then I heard there was an airborne unit at Ashland, Nebraska. <laughs> so I uh, talked a recruiter into changing me over to the Army side and did uh, 13 years in the Army Guard. And got hired on by LPD and twenty three years with them. And Man, <laughs> that's that 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 just seems like I feel like you don't you won't necessarily even need that like the belt that you just <laughs> said. <laughs> so the military jump out of planes and I was a cop. Yeah, no, go it, for it. it <laughs> keep in mind, it's all relative. There's always somebody you can never get on your high horse about anything because someone will come along and kick that stool. <laughs> that's that's true. Well, thank you for your service. We, we appreciate that. Um, we're going to go ahead and wrap up, Ed, unless you have uh, another direction. No, I, no. All right. Do you guys have a, a website or anything that you guys want to plug here right at the end? Yeah. We can BJJ.com. All right. Easy. You guys know it. They're the best in town. Thank you for joining us guys. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe I need to. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's for everybody. You know, well, some people go, well, it's not for everybody, but. I well, do you do you mind like close contact with people? Yeah. No, I don't mind. Right, that's that's the biggest thing. That's the big, biggest opposite. But it doesn't like I've got <laughs> scientists, doctors, lawyers, welders, trades. He's got everybody. Yeah. yeah. Is, Is there, there students? When you play do video games, do you do it on hard mode or do it on god mode? Oh shoot! Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, the cameras aren't rolling. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. I don't know, hard mode, God yeah. mode. Yeah, um, people, people who like solving problems, doing puzzles, playing chess. Yeah, love that. Big pro- chess guy. Programming. Not they to say BJJ is. Like they love the, it. The chess game. Really, I love really? chess. Because it's a big chess. It's, chess guy. It is really. It's like I do this. What do you do? I do this. What do you do? Okay. And so you're like playing with their with their reactions. That's kind of like high level. In the beginning, it's just like. Reaction. Tackle, tackle the guy and uh, try to try to do a thing real fast or bend his arm the wrong way. But What's the? You know we should ask this, but but okay, like black belt. From my only explanation of, of, of what a black belt was is that if so, someone who could overpower someone bigger than them mm. was it, or what's the actual? What's the what's the line on on? Because I'm, yes, you have degrees, but like once you get black belt, you're. I mean, you're. I'm assuming pretty good. Mm-hmm. Well, here's, so. Jared was. Came to me as a white belt. Okay. I cannot beat Jared anymore. Wow. So. So if you place third, <laughs> and you could beat him, so Jared I'm not. I'm not. Jared, I'm not. Get out of here. I'm not his division. <laughs> <laughs> but he's not 59 either. But that's a. You know, I really good point actually. You know, used to jokingly say, my goal is to make my students better than me, <laughs> and when that happens, you have to be like, you gotta get a new goal. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be happy. You gotta be yeah, happy. Yeah, you gotta. Yeah. But so it takes about ten years to get a black belt if you train. Mm-hmm. If you train very regularly, three times a week. Is on there average. is there a like uh, accomplishment you have to have for like or a certain amount of accolades you have to get to? Nope. It's just nope. You can be a hobbyist. That can just be more of a time thing. As oh yeah, the hobbyist. difference between like the high level competitive grapplers, uh-huh. jujitsu guys, like that are they're just out there like we'll be watching a purple belt just like that would just cream any um you know regular black belt <laughs> really yeah so it's not even like the i guess the belt it depends on so I mean, the belt is more of a time thing is, is well you it's a time thing and a skill thing though yeah yeah it's a skill it's a skill thing but I there's, mean, di- there's a difference between being a hobbyist and being a competitor right yeah. if you're doing a competitive a competitive a competitive purple belt which is like midway through the belt range yeah should be a hobbyist black belt. Mm-hmm. You know, a hobbyist black belt is going to have a lot of tricks, mm-hmm. but a competitor black belt is going to have speed, Athletic. aggression, athleticism, and they're going to know a decent amount of jujitsu too. How much? How much aggression? Do, like, is is it how is it important to, to be aggressive with it? Because like it's boxing, yeah. Scale, it is. Like, he's like, well, well no, I'm not. To class or not? You know, well, no. I just I feel like if you're because like if you could have like that guy that's like quietly sitting there. And we just, should be. You, you know. should there. There has to be action. Like you have to, oh, yeah. you have well, to do things, but you don't necessarily have to be like aggressive in people's the face. More you can you be know, reactive. The less you have to 
be athletic, basically. Okay. They're aggressive and all of that stuff. So that's generally how, you know, like, you know, a white belt will go with another white belt. And they're like, Arr! and then they'll go with Jared or me, and we'll shake. <laughs> you know, kind of <laughs> and and, and I'll go, and they'll start to move, and I'll just kind of move a little bit, and they'll look at me like, are we going? Like, yeah. Are we we're going? going? Because they're used to that. <laughs> Someone going next. How do the, what are the weight? Is it just weight or is it height? Because like grappling, it's weight. Just weight. It's just weight for competition. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter. So if a five foot six guy versus a six. Well, because like I'm like guy, not short. I get not. Well, that. there's <coughs> there's moves that uh, short guys are better at. Oh, there's mo- moves that long guys are better at. So and you have. Start? So it's better. It's better if you have a uh, you know if you learn. A specific style that matches your body style, um, because they're like if you got really short legs, yeah, and your plan is to wrap the legs around somebody's neck, that's gonna be really hard for you because yeah, they're you're never gonna get your legs crossed together. Right. Yeah, a yeah, real long guy, for other a real long guy is gonna have no problem with it. So Shoot. you kind of play you play styles that work with your body type. Does anyone get like really hurt? At the, at yeah, like really hurt. Like.